Namaste, welcome to Yoga and You. This is Rasika Sampat. Today we're going to be working on a sequence for the hips. Hips are such an important part of our body. It's the center part of the body. It's the heaviest part of our body. It's a complex web of muscles that tends to hold a lot of tension, both physical tension from the way we sit, stand, do our chores, all of that. And also it is the seat of our emotional tension. So you may notice that if you have an emotionally charged day, you'll notice your hips are really tight. So tight hips also causes a lot of other issues like back pain. A lot of back pains are the result of tight hips. You can also feel some pain and aches and pains in your uh, legs. So in today's practice, we're going to be working on opening up the hips in all ways. So before we start, I want to uh, give you a little gist about the different kind of movements that uh, are possible in the hips, okay? So one way is bringing the knee up towards the chest. This is flexion. When you move the knee away from the chest, that's extension, okay? When you move the inner thighs towards each other, that's adduction. When you move them away from each other, that's abduction. When you move the knee towards your inner thigh, that's internal rotation. When the knee moves away from the, uh, the opposite thigh, it's external rotation. Okay, so we're going to move the hips in all these directions in today's practice. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll uh, land up feeling a lot more open in your hips. Okay, we'll start sitting down. So we'll start sitting down, sit in any comfortable cross-legged position. Now, if your hips are tight, this position itself could feel quite uncomfortable. So if you find yourself rounding at the back, you can elevate yourself by using a cushion under your seat. Okay, so we'll sit up nice and tall wherever you are and rest your hands comfortably on your lap, close your eyes. And we're going to start focusing on the breath. The most important thing in any yoga practice is your breath and your breath has a beautiful way of helping you release tension which is what we are aiming to do in today's practice as well. So inhale and focus on exhaling for a longer period of time. Continue that way. And as you exhale this time, can you find a little more release in your hips, bringing the knees a little closer to the mat probably. Next time when you exhale, see if you can release any tension that you're holding in your face. Maybe unclench your jaw. Release the lines on your forehead. And notice how you feel in your hip area. One more breath. All right, gently blink your eyes open. And now we'll bring our feet onto the mat about hips width apart. Take your hands back behind you and we're going to start with some windshield wipers. In fact, you can take your feet out about mats width apart and then we'll drop both the knees to the right. Knees to the left. To the right. To the left. One more time, to the right. and to the left. Come back to center, cross your ankles and come into tabletop position. Onto your hands and knees. Making sure your, your wrists are under your shoulders and your knees are under your hips. Good, now from here, you're gonna lift the right leg up and bend the knee. So your toes are pointing up towards the sky. From here, we're going to rotate the hips. So just taking circles with your knees, feeling like your thigh bone is moving around the hip joint. Okay, we're promoting the synovial fluid here, lubricating the joint. And one more circle. 
good. Now step that right leg to the front in between your hands. Scoot that left knee back a little bit. And from here, you can bring your hands onto your right leg and just pulse up and down. Okay? Notice how this feels on your hips. You'll realize with these movements, how tight your hips really are. You might find these movements itself very difficult. So these dynamic movements, these, this pulsing and all of this helps to sort of open up the hip joint, helps to lubricate the joints helps bring some heat into the joints, which helps in turn in opening it up. Okay, now we come into a lizard lunge. Try as much as you can. Take the right foot towards the outer edge of your mat. Bring both your hands to the inside. And if this is comfortable, you can drop down to your forearms. You can also use a block and bring your forearms onto the blocks. Okay, if you can come all the way down, Come down and breathe here for five. If your hips are really tight in this posture, you might notice your, you begin to tighten your teeth, clench your teeth. So become aware of these things and consciously soften into these areas where you're holding tension. Two and one. Slowly come up onto your palm and take your right knee back. Coming back into tabletop position. We'll repeat the same thing on the other side. Lift your left knee up, keep the knee bent and take circles with your knees. Moving it, moving the thigh bone around the hip socket. And one more circle. And step your left leg forward in between your hands. Lift up, bring your hands to your left thigh and pulse back and forth. See how forward you can go. How far can you take your uh, hips down towards your left heel and back. Okay, now if you feel sufficiently warmed up, you can bring both your hands to the inside of your left foot. Move the left leg out towards the outer edge of your mat and come into lizard lunge. Four arms down, either on the blocks or on the mat. Become aware of your tension in the face or in any other part of your body. Maintain congruency between your hips, your knees and your ankles, which means that all these three are facing the same direction. Three, two, and one. Inhale, come up onto your palms. Take that left knee back into tabletop position. Tuck your toes and find your way into downward facing dog. You, if your lower back feels strained, you can put a slight bend in the knees. And stay here for a big breath in. Big breath out. Good. Now inhale and lift the right leg up towards the sky. From here, bend your knee and again take the same circles that you did in tabletop position. Do that here as well. Just three circles, big ones. Two and three. Good. Now do your best to step that right leg forward to the front of your mat. Now take your right foot over to the left side of the mat. So the right knee is still towards the right. We're coming down into pigeon pose. Eka pada raja ka potasana. Drop your shin down, drop your hips down. If you find this very difficult, you can slide a cushion under your left bum and sit on it. You'll find some elevation that way. What you want to avoid here is to sink the weight onto the right side. Okay, so if you feel the weight going to the right side, Elevate yourself, use something under your left, under your right hip, sorry, and square the hips more. You want to think of drawing the right hip backwards and the left hip forwards, okay? So you find that squared position. Take your hands by the side of your right leg and lift yourself up. Feel that stretch in the right hip and breathe here for another three, two, and one. Slowly 
lean forward lift the knee up take the knee back into tabletop first and then lift yourself up and back to downward facing dog take a big breath in big breath out lift that right leg up and bend the knee and open the hip so you want to stack that right hip over the left you're just releasing that hip flexor which you flexed right now by coming into pigeon you're just opening that part of the body out and exhale to bring it back down we'll repeat everything on the other side now inhale and lift the left leg up three legged dog bend the knee and take circles with your knees nice big circles one two three step the left leg forward to the front of your mat and take your left foot over to the right side of the mat drop the left shin down drop your hips down as much as you can use props if you need to and try to find an upright position as much as possible you might if your hips are tight it might be impossible nearly to sit upright in which case you can bring your hands forward and slightly lean over the left shin that's fine you can even use blocks under your hands so you get a little bit more of that lift okay we we'll hold for another three two and one gently pick yourself up send the left knee back into table top first and then make your way into downward facing dog take your left leg up inhale bend the knee and open the hip you want to stack the left hip over the right trying to get that left knee up towards the sky and exhale to release come back to your downward facing dog let's take a clearing breath inhale through the nose open your mouth and sigh it out try to step your right leg to the outside of your right hand and the left leg to the outside of your left hand squat down find malasana squat lift the spine up so you want to think of lifting the crown of your head upwards so your spine lengthens use your triceps or your elbows to push the knees outwards and bring your hands to your heart center this is such a lovely posture for everyone especially for women um really helps strengthen and open up the hips in equal measure stay here and breathe for another 3 two and one all right now slowly come down to your tush and lie down on your back Now lift your feet up towards the sky. We're going to come into happy baby pose. Hold on to the outer edges of your feet and draw the knees down towards the mat. Keep the lower back into the mat, pressing into the mat, and we'll stay here for 5 4 3 2 1. Gently hug the knees into your chest. and now drop the left foot onto the mat and cross the right ankle over the left knee okay into like a figure of four position gently draw the left knee into your chest thread the needle and hold behind your left thigh pull the left knee in towards your chest use your right elbow to push the right knee away from you feel this on the right hip all your awareness there focus on the exhales for another 3 2 and 1 now drop the left foot down just take that left foot over towards the outer edge of the mat and drop both your knees to the right coming into a gentle twist here you can take your arms out to the side and maybe look over your left shoulder now to get the full benefit of the stretch think of pressing down into your left knee using your right foot and simultaneously you want to try and draw that tailbone forwards and down so what that means is you want to try to bring that left butt down towards the mat 
So as you do both these things, you'll feel this lovely stretch across the lower back on the left side, all the way into the IT band. All these places that tension loves to hide. And slowly come back up. Now from here, you're gonna lift that right leg straight up. Sutta Padangushtasana A. You can wrap your hands around your calf, around your ankle, and if you're really flexible, you can grab your big toe with your peace sign fingers. And if this is comfortable, you can release your left leg onto the mat. Wherever you are, focus on lengthening the hamstring, the entire back of your right leg in fact, and stay for another three, two, and one. Supta Padangushtasana B now, open the right leg out to the right side. You can bend the knee into a 90 degree angle, hold on the inside of your right knee and press it outwards. The left hip will not change, it will remain unmoving. Three, two, and one. Slowly bring the right knee back to center. Hold your, the outside of your right knee with your left hand. Open the right hand out to the right side. And let's take a twist. Sutta Padangushtasana C. Take your right knee over to the left side. This is a modified version. The full version is where you can straighten the leg. If that is too intense, you can keep the knee bent. This will get you the stretch in all the places that you need. Focus on bringing the right shoulder down towards the mat. Okay. So it's okay if your right knee is lifted up. One more breath. And slowly come back to center. Hug the right knee into your chest. And drop the right foot down. We'll repeat on the other side. Threading the needle first. Cross the left ankle over the right knee. Pull the knee in, right, right knee in towards your chest. Thread the needle as you hold the back of your right thigh and pull it in towards your chest. Use your left elbow to press the left knee away from you and stay for another three, two, all your awareness to the left hip. And one, slowly set the right foot down. Scoot that right foot towards the outer edge of your mat and drop both your knees to the left. Take your arms out wide. Again, focus, in, focus on drawing that right knee down using the left foot. Simultaneously, focus on drawing that right sitting bone down as well. Two. And one. Slowly come back up. Take that right, left leg up towards the sky. Hold wherever it's accessible for you. You can hold behind the calf ankle or the big toe. Try to maintain the straightness of the knee. If it's too much on your hamstring, you can put a micro bend, but try to straighten the leg as much as possible. It's okay if your leg is somewhere here. If you're able to keep it straight, you can even hold behind the thigh, no problem. But I want you to try and straighten the knees as much as you can, okay? Stay for five, four, three, two, and one, take that left leg out to the left side. You can bend the knee like you did the last and the previous side. Three, two, and one. Bring the left knee back to center. Hold the outside of your left knee with your right hand and gently twist over towards the right. Look over your left shoulder, planting the left shoulder down onto the mat. Stay for another three. Focus on bigger exhalations, longer exhalations. Two. And one. Beautiful. Slowly come back to center. Hug the left knee in towards your chest. And slowly bring both your knees in and rock yourself up and down until you come up to seated. Okay, now we're going to come into butterfly, Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together. And we're going to take flaps in butterfly, okay? So wrap your fingers around your toes and just flap the knees up and down. 
This is a really great way to promote synovial fluid in your joints. And great way to open up the hips. Another three, two, and one. All right. Now from here, just grab your right leg, lift that right leg up. What you're gonna do is hold the right shin like you're holding a baby, okay? It's called cradling baby pose. So you wrap your arms around the right shin, interlock your fingers in front. Bring the shin as close to your chest as you can, okay? What you want to avoid here is rounding where your chest is moving away from the leg, okay? Lift the spine up and bring the shin close to your chest. From here, you're going to rock it like you're rocking the baby to sleep. Moving the knee back and forth, moving your shin back and forth. So this really works on opening up the hips. Really effective hip opener. All right, two and one. Come back to center. Now, if this was comfortable, you can stay right here and continue this movement. If you feel like this was comfortable and you can try something a little more challenging, you can grab your uh, right ankle with your left elbow. Okay, so hook it with your left elbow, like so. Take your right hand from behind your head and try to hold your uh, right foot. And we'll stay here for five. You can even interlock your fingers if you can't hold the foot. Two and one. Gently release the right hand first, then slowly release the right leg down onto the mat. Okay, same thing on the other side. Lift the left leg up, hold your baby, and rock it. You can even sing a little lullaby for it while you're rocking it here. And Three, two, and one. Lovely. Now, if you did it on the other side and you'd like to try it on this side, you can hook the left ankle with your elbow. Take the left hand from behind and hold the left foot with your right hand. If not the foot, you can interlock your fingers. Okay, stay for another three, two, and one. Lovely. Release the left hand. Release the leg. Okay. All right, now we're going to come into Gomukhasana legs. Okay, so you're going to squeeze the thighs together. You want to aim to stack the right knee over the left. For a lot of us, this might not be possible and you might be here, that's fine. As long as you're effectively squeezing the inner thighs together as close as possible for you, that's fine. Okay. The direction you want to move towards is to bring the knees one on top of the other. Make sure both your sitting bones are down, don't move to the left side. And from here, we're going to get into a forward fold. So inhale, sweep your arms up. And exhale, fold over your knees. Try to bring your chin to the outside of your knee. And breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come back up. Let's switch sides. Left knee on top of the right. Inhale, lift your hands up. And exhale, fold. And we'll stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Walking the hands back, come back to an upright position. Release your legs, grab a block and lie down on your back. If you don't have a block with you, you can grab a, a hardbound book or like a box, anything that looks like this, which is a little stable. Now, we're gonna come into a, a supported bridge position. We're almost near the end. Inhale to lift the hips up. Setu Bandhasana. Slide the block. I like to use the medium height. Slide it under your sacrum. Okay, the sacrum is the place in between the lower back and the butt. Okay, so the flat part of your back, that will be your sacrum. So you slide it over there. And 
you can stay here in this constructive rest pose uh, sorry in this supported bridge pose and from here if this is comfortable and you'd like a deeper stretch in your hip flexors you can lift that right leg up towards the sky and then slowly drive it down and bring the heel to the mat same thing lift the left leg up and draw the left leg down heel on the mat okay so you'll feel a nice beautiful stretch along the front of your body the hip flexors and the psoas this is also a great way to sort of uh, support the sacrum sacrum is a very important part of our body it's what connects the spine to the hips to the pelvis and we'll stay here and breathe for another three two focus on the exhalation and one slowly bend both your knees lift the hips up as you slide the block away bring the spine down one vertebra at a time and we'll end with what is called the constructive rest pose so for this you take your feet apart as wide as the mat and drop the knees in towards each other this is a great way to reset the SI joint and it's also really nice if you're facing lower back pains and lower back stiffness great way to just relax here so you may stay here with one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly and relax here for as long as you'd like to. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Just want a word of caution that sometimes when we practice deeply into the hips the way we did today, it is sometimes possible that it brings to surface some uncomfortable emotions because the hips are a seat of our emotional tension. So if you experience something like that, know that it's absolutely normal and completely all right to feel that way. That being said, hopefully after your practice, you feel a lot more comfortable in doing your everyday things, sitting, standing, walking, all of that becomes so much more comfortable when your hips are open. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in another episode of Yoga and Yoga.